Welcome to part two in the module on patterns and frameworks for asynchronous event handling. In the previous part of this module, we described the proactor pattern. We're now going to describe the ACE proactor framework, which can be used to implement this pattern in a portable manner on a number of different operating system platforms. As you'll see, this is by far the most complicated framework that's in ACE. And as we go through the discussion, I'll explain to you where the complexity comes from and how the framework tries its best to try to alleviate the complexity as much as possible. Let's first start by talking about the motivation for the ACE proactive framework. Operating systems have support for asynchronous operations in various degrees. Windows has good support. Other POSIX platforms have some support. But as a general rule of thumb, these mechanisms are characterized in a few ways that are somewhat problematic. First of all, they tend to be somewhat tedious and error prone to program. And the reason for the complexity comes from a number of sources. The APIs are often somewhat low level and difficult to understand. In asynchronous programming by its very nature is complicated because it separates the invocation of an operation from its completion in time and space. And it also doesn't help the fact that a number of the APIs that you have to program these on various operating systems tend to be non-portable and often inefficient as well. Windows does a very nice job of asynchronous I.O. It supports asynchronous I.O. through I.O. completion ports. It supports overlapped I.O. And in general, even though it's somewhat tricky to program, the implementation is robust and the performance is good. POSIX, in contrast, is a bit more problematic. The APIs are somewhat limited. They don't provide as wide range of capabilities in, a more, in as consistent of a way that Windows does. The asynchronous I.O. mechanisms in POSIX were largely designed originally for disk I.O. And you can use them for network I.O., but it's a little tricky and it's not as, as generalizable and consistent as it is in Windows. The other problem is that there tend to be a number of inefficiencies. Some operating system implementations of asynchronous I.O on POSIX platforms actually spawn a thread for each asynchronous operation, which to some extent defeats the whole purpose. So because of all these different issues, it, we decided to come up with a framework that would help to hide as much of these complexities as we could. This framework is the ACE Proactor framework. And the classes in this framework allow event-driven applications to process completion events for operations that are invoked asynchronously. Typically, classes who use this framework will end up inheriting from something called ACE Service Handler, which is a little different from the ACE SVC handler we talked about in the context of the Acceptor Connector framework. And the reason for that is it's used for asynchronous operations. And the ACE Proactor framework will then dispatch various hook methods when things complete after these asynchronous operations are done running. Naturally, the various classes that are part of the ACE Proactor framework are inspired and designed in accordance with the Proactor pattern that we talked about before. So let's talk about the various classes that are part of the ACE Proactor framework. The first set of classes that are in there are largely responsible for invoking operations asynchronously and then being able to handle the completion of those operations in as clean a way as possible given the overall asynchronous I.O. paradigm. And these would include the ACE Handler class and the various read stream and write stream classes that we're going to talk about. There then are a set of classes for being able to accept connections or to initiate connections asynchronously. So we have the ACE async acceptor and the ACE async connector. And those are used much the way that they're used in the acceptor connector framework, except now we're doing these in a more asynchronous way. There's then the ACE service handler that I mentioned before. And it typically provides the target for the creation of these services when the acceptors and connectors asynchronous operations complete. And the service handlers also provide various means of being able to do TCP IP processing in a networked environment. And then the final piece here is something called the ACE Proactor. And the ACE Proactor itself is really the, the heart of this. It's the driver. It's the thing that controls the event loop. It's the thing that drives the asynchronous processing and the completion dispatching to the completion handlers when the processing is done. You can take a look at this URL for more discussion about the ACE Proactor framework. Of course, this discussion also appears in Chapter 8 of the C++ Network Programming Volume 2 book. So let's now go ahead and talk about the various classes that are part 
of the ACE Proactor framework. And as you can see, there's a number of them, uh, many more than there are, say, in the ACE Reactor framework or in some of the other frameworks. And the reason for this really is easy to understand. When you deal with asynchronous I.O., you have to separate in time and space the invocation of operations from their completion. And all these various mechanisms we're about to talk about are there to support that separation. The first set of classes we're going to talk about are the ACE async read stream and ACE async write stream classes. And these classes are used to initiate asynchronous operations to read and write data, as the names might suggest. If you think about how you would do this in a classic synchronous multi-threaded environment, you can invoke a call like send or receive that may block. And there's no problem with this because you've got a separate thread of control and a separate runtime stack to keep track of any state and any other interactions so that when the control comes back to that function, when it returns, you can pick up from where you left off. With asynchronous I.O., however, it doesn't work this way. When you invoke an operation, the handling of the completion may occur much later in time. It may occur in a different thread of control. And so there's a separation or a decoupling in time and space of invocation from completion handler processing. And this class helps with that particular process. One of the things you can do with this class is you can initiate asynchronous operations, reads and writes. And those operations will not block. And they will go ahead and set the wheels in motion to have the underlying asynchronous operation processor, the, the operating system typically, to run these operations while the caller thread goes back to doing something else. Something else you can do with this is you can also bind an I.O. handle, an ACE handler object, which is used to get the completion results back, and an ACE proactor, which keeps track of who's going to demultiplex the results when they're done, with the particular operation that you're invoking. So they're all bundled together. Yet another thing you can do is internally it'll create an object that can keep track of all the parameters associated with the asynchronous operation. So when the operation is done, those parameters come back to the completion handler and they can be used to figure out what to do next, whether things succeeded, whether they failed, whether or not there are issues with respect to how much data you read or, or uh, sent, and so on and so forth. Because we inherit from a class called async, ace, async operation, we can also open and initiate as well as cancel asynchronous operations. This particular class helps to handle the variability of asynchronous I.O. operations via a common interface, which can work with Windows, it can work with POSIX in, in a consistent way. The next class we're going to talk about handles the completion of these asynchronous operations when they're done. And this is called the ACE handler class. And what this class does is it provides a set of hook methods that are called back automatically by the Proactor framework when an asynchronously invoked operation completes. And so for each different kind of operation that we can have run asynchronously, asynchronous accepts, asynchronous connects, asynchronous reads and writes on streams, asynchronous reads and writes on files, other kinds of transmissions, such as using transmit file, which use direct memory access to do very efficient asynchronous transfer of bulk data from a file to a socket, and so on. All of these different kinds of completion events and the handling of them can be expressed through a single base class interface called ACE Handler. It also provides a way to handle timeout events as well. This particular class allows us to handle the variability of asynchronous completion handling within a common API. So clearly, the read and write streams that we saw before and the handlers all go together. They're basically two sides of the same coin, the initiation side and the completion side. We then, for network communication, have something called the ACE service handler class. And this is essentially the target of the ACE async acceptor and ACE async connector that are used to initiate connections actively and passively. And when they're done, they go ahead and initialize this ACE service handler. And the ACE service handler provides a couple things. It provides a way to be able to activate a service to do something, typically to run things in some kind of, of a uh, asynchronous way, although you could spawn threads if you chose to. It's up to you, because you can control how those hook methods are overridden in subclasses. It also allows you to figure out who the connected peer is, what their addresses are, which you may want to use for various purposes. Uh, for example, to figure out if you want to actually communicate to this peer at all. And because it inherits from ACE Handler, it is able to handle the completion 
of I.O. events, things like asynchronous reads and asynchronous writes. So a service handler is typically used in cases where you want to handle the variability of network asynchronous I.O. behind a common interface. The next class we'll look at should be pretty clear by now. This is the ace async acceptor. There's also an ace async connector that is the dual of this. The ace async connector is used to initiate passive connection establishment asynchronously, of course. So you can go ahead and open and accept connections that come in, and those will be handled asynchronously as they complete when the clients connect. It's a factory that will create and initialize service handlers, much like the acceptors and connectors do that we talked about before in the ACE acceptor connector framework that's more synchronous in nature. It also allows you to be able to cancel previously initiated asynchronous accept operations. It provides a hook method to validate connections before you actually create service handlers. You can do a form of call screening to ignore connections from clients you don't want to talk to. And again, because it inherits from ACE handler, it's able to handle the completion of asynchronous accept events in a common way. So the ACE async acceptor, much like the ACE async connector that we're not going to talk about here, allow us to be able to handle the variability of asynchronous connection establishment within a common API. And this can work both for Unix platforms, POSIX platforms that don't really support asynchronous accepts and connects, so we have to emulate them using threads, or the Windows platforms that do support natively asynchronous accepts and asynchronous connects. So they're very powerful, and you can hide all those diversities and heterogeneous differences behind a common API. The final piece of the puzzle here brings it all together. This is the ACE Proactor class. Much like for ACE Reactor, it's the class that runs the event loop. It does a couple of things. It centralizes the event loop processing by providing methods to run the event loop, either indefinitely or one at a time. It also provides a way to be able to demultiplex completion events that come in from the underlying completion event queues, things like I.O. completion ports on Windows and other similar mechanisms you have on POSIX platforms, and be able to get those things dispatched back to the appropriate completion handler that knows what to do in response to the completion of the events, such as kick off an asynchronous read call or kick off another asynchronous write call, et cetera. It also can be used to dispatch timeouts as well. So just like the reactor, we can dispatch a number of different kinds of events, I.O. events, time events, and so on, with one common interface. This particular class handles the overall variability of asynchronous event handling behind a common API that works both on Unix and, and uh, POSIX platforms as well as on Windows. So to summarize this particular part in the module, Proactive I.O. models are more complicated. They are inherently more complicated to program than synchronous event handling and synchronous threading. And that's because of this separation in terms of time and space from the initiation and the completion, which means that things that you historically would have handled by implicit information stored in the runtime stack, say in the activation record when you made a function call that was blocking, that kind of information can no longer be stored implicitly on the stack, but instead you have to store it explicitly using a variety of different data structures. Some of the ones we're talking about here, some of which, such as asynchronous completion tokens, we'll talk about in later parts of this module. There are also, of course, a number of significant accidental complexities of programming with asynchronous I.O. The programming interfaces are somewhat clumsy, not well documented, hard to find information on how to use them effectively. If you just read the manual pages in isolation, you'll have a really difficult time knowing how all the pieces fit together. So because of these issues, and because of some of the portability issues as well, we developed the ACE Proactor framework to help shield a lot of those accidental complexities, make things more portable wherever possible, make things a lot more systematically applicable, systematically reusable. So even though there still are more moving parts than a reactive approach or a leader follower's approach or a half sync, half async approach, the surface area that you deal with is much easier to understand. It uses common object oriented techniques such as inheritance and other patterns we're going to talk about in just a moment in order to be able to reduce the overall complexity of programming these very powerful asynchronous I.O. models.